So now in this video, we're going to look at wiring the 555 timer. This is an NE555 timer. Any 555 timer though, I think will work pretty much exactly the same. And we're going to wire it in monostable, also called one shot mode. And uh, monostable here. So I put together this diagram a while ago. Let's look at the uh, pin layout. So here's the component 555 NE555. And so there's divots those go to the top so this one only has the center divot sometimes it will also have this divot or only that divot you, you never know but uh, wherever the divot is that goes to the top and this little round one usually to the left that will be pin number one so ground trigger output reset that's working our way down there and then we jump across and then we go working up five six seven eight so control which we're not going to deal with in this video Threshold 6, discharge, and then the uh, positive side of the power supply, VCC, as you can see there. So I already have four jumpers on there, and we will uh, look at what they're doing on the data sheet. So we need to power this, and so that's the ground pin, pin number 1. You can see it goes to ground. Ground is usually when you're dealing with a, you know, usually it's a lower voltage, but a single supply we have positive and negative then usually the uh, negative our ground everything ends its journey there as far as following it electrically so we consider that there's 5 volt power supply so we consider a 5 volt difference across there and according to this data sheet I wrote 5 volts I designed it for a circuit a power supply with 5 volts so the 555 timer can handle higher voltages as can these components but we're gonna stick with the uh, 5 volts for this video so we have the power pins right there and uh, VCC is uh, pin number 8 another thing that does that we're gonna talk about in this video is set one-third and two-thirds of the power supply voltage there's a few resistive areas in there and it taps in between them voltage dividers for one-third about 1.33 volts and uh, two-thirds about uh, 3.33 volts and uh, so that would be the one-third and two-thirds of the power supply voltage we're only going to deal with the two-thirds power supply voltage in this video you can see here pin number four I accidentally wrote five there but it's four goes to the positive rail that's the reset pin it waits for a low signal basically a connection to the negative rail less than uh, I don't know the voltage I don't think it's one-third of the power supply voltage but close to uh, zero volts so we're putting it to the positive rail that's going to hold a solid 5 volts there no matter what it's directly to the 5 volt rail we don't have to worry about any stray signals accidentally setting that low which resets the 555 timer and that overwhelms anything else going on and uh, so we uh, just want to disable that that does not get used in this circuit at all so now let's zoom in there is another jumper it's really small so right here we have just this little metal jumper and I don't have one that covers this gap that has a little insulation so it's just bare metal but basically this is all one node it's one connective area right now so we have six which is a threshold pin it monitors the voltage of the capacitor for uh, two-thirds of the power supply voltage we'll look at that coming up and then pin seven that is the discharge pin and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more coming up but usually you put a resistor to seven sometimes for other circuits there's another resistor going to the capacitor uh, we don't have to deal with that in this video so we just have the resistor going there and then the jumper which will go to the capacitor so let's add those right now let's grab a, a one kilo ohm resistor that will make the math easiest put that to the positive rail as you can see right there and then let's grab a 1000 microfarad capacitor right here and what that's going to do that's going to set the timing so as you can see here I wrote with a 1 kilo ohm resistor we'll get about a 1.1 second high output with a 10 kilo ohm resistor so 10 times the resistance that is with the 1000 microfarad capacitor we will expect about 11 second high output 
So it is the capacitance in farads. So 1000 microfarads is the same as 0 0.001 farad times the resistance. So 1000, you have one thousandths of a farad times 1000, that's 1. And then you multiply it by 1.1 for 1.1 second. 10 times the resistance or 10 times the capacitance. You could do that too. But uh, 10 times the resistance is easier because this is a fairly large capacitor. You will get 10 times as long of a high output. So I have the math right down here. And uh, so that's pretty boring. Let's move on to uh, the rest of the circuit. So we have to give a low signal to the trigger right there for it to to trigger. Now we don't want to falsely trigger it though and so we're gonna take a 10,000 ohm resistor, 10 kilo ohm resistor, put that to the positive rail and then to this jumper. We could also set it right here but it kinda obscures the vision of what's going on a little bit more so I usually set it close to the switch right there so that's positive rail going there. What that does it will keep 5 volts at the pin pretty reliably until we close the switch. We cl when we close the switch we'll have a direct connection to the negative rail to the pin. There'll be a little bit of a connection there but this is a fairly high value resistor so a little current will go through the resistor going positive and negative to the negative rail and we'll still have a direct connection to the negative rail. The uh, pin number two here the trigger has to get less than one third of the power supply voltage to to uh, trigger it. As long as we keep it higher, just like with the reset pin, then it does nothing. So, that is uh, over here. I, uh, I should have shown this. So, negative rail to the switch, which is normally open, and then we go to uh, pin 2 with that jumper. Also, pin 2, we have the 10 kilo ohm pull up resistor. As I said, it holds 5 volts until we hit the switch. So, it holds up that voltage until we hit the switch and then it's much easier to get to the negative rail you will get zero volts out there and so of course you'd have to measure the voltage which is a good idea to do also but uh, for this video we're going to have a visual demonstration of an LED lighting up so I'm going to use a one kilo ohm resistor exact value does not matter but since I'm already using a one kilo ohm resistor and it's not a terribly high value resistor. The LED will still light up uh, pretty nicely. We will just use that. And the LED is polarized. The long lead, the anode, up here. That goes towards the output. And we want this to light up when the output's high. And the short lead, the cathode here, goes to the negative rail. So while the LED is off, there's no voltage difference. Because we'll have zero volts there. And ground is zero volts. So... That's it for the wiring. It's a pretty simple circuit. Let's turn the uh, power on. You can see that the LED is off. We hit the button and the LED is on for about 1.1 seconds. Right there. And uh, pretty straightforward. If we swap out the uh, resistor for a 10 kilo ohm resistor, we will have about an 11 second high output when we close the switch right there and uh, you're gonna see it's about 11 seconds or so and uh, let's wait for that to go off there we go now let's take out the 1000 microfarad capacitor and replace it with a 100 microfarad capacitor we're making the exact same connection there and now it should be about one second because we have one tenth of the capacitance that we just had, so about 1.1 seconds in that range. And uh, these capacitors might be slightly higher or slightly lower than the rated value. Same with the resistors. So that may throw it off a little bit, and who knows what other imperfections there might be. But that's the basic formula right there. 1.1 times the capacitance in farads times the resistance. And with the 1000 microfarad capacitor, you have that the 100 microfarad capacitor, there will be another zero and then a one. So it's one tenth of the capacitance. So let us continue on. We'll put the 1000 microfarad capacitor back and the one kilo ohm resistor. So you can make the capacitors pretty much as small as you want. 
as long as you can use a high enough value resistor and uh, vice versa for the most part so probably smaller value capacitors would work better but uh, this makes the math really easy so I like that for the demonstration circuit everything works the same just for the same amount of time with a smaller value capacitor you need a larger value resistor so right now we are in a stable state right here so nothing's going on that's why it's monostable it has one stable state as I said before we have more than one-third of the power supply voltage to the trigger pin it is waiting for a low signal so right now whatever current gets through the capacitor is actually going to ground it is discharging through pin number seven there that's why it's called the discharge pin pin number six is watching the voltage of the capacitor for two-thirds of the power supply voltage that's what it's always doing when there is a capacitor in the uh, circuit so we're going to look at a stable mode in another circuit pin 6 will be looking at that and we will wire the uh, capacitor to pin number 2 so that it responds to when the capacitor is at two-thirds of the power supply voltage so there's more to it but uh, that's just kind of an update of what we'll look at plus I did earlier videos on that where I discussed it but in any case right now the uh, discharge pin is going to ground the output is set low that's why it's off it's connected to ground internally going up there as well as the other side of the load is to ground we have a direct connection to those two points no reason for the LED to light up so now we're going to give a short uh, signal low signal uh, power supply is off no it just was loose there we go give a short signal the output goes high for a little bit so now let me point out too if I hold the button down the output stays high we pass that about 1.1 seconds as soon as I let go the output will go off so we have to uh, press it and release it before the output turns off to get that time of 1.1 second but if you do hold it more than 1.1 seconds as soon as you let go it will turn off but in case we gave that brief pulse the output went high as you can see there and the uh, capacitor stopped or the current going through the resistor stop being sent directly to ground and charges the capacitor so the capacitor charges to two-thirds of the power supply voltage while the output is high and then so once the uh, trigger is set to more than one-third of the power supply voltage and the capacitor charges to two-thirds of the power supply voltage as soon as that happens then the capacitor discharges through pin 7 and the output goes back to low so let us now uh, put the 10,000 ohm resistor back because we want to slow this down so that we can take a voltage measurement of the capacitor when we trigger this so two-thirds of the power supply voltage is uh, I think it is 3.6 volts if I'm not mistaken but uh, I think it's 1.3 for one-third and then uh, I think it is uh, 3.6 for two-thirds but I, I could be wrong but uh, in any case we're gonna measure the voltage of the capacitor and uh, I press the button you can see it charging and the output is high right now the LED is on there we go that's better but uh, we lost connection a little bit so 3.3 volts that's what it is yeah 1.6 volts I think is one third and then 3.3 is two thirds about that so the outputs high I have a better connection now to measure the voltage and you can see it looks like at uh, 3.3 volts two thirds of the power supply voltage then the output uh, turns off and the capacitor instantly discharges like that uh, so in any case that's all there really is to it and there's also the a stable mode where as I said before it takes advantage of the capacitor charging to two-thirds voltage and instead of uh, jumping directly to the uh, discharge pin usually there's a resistor to uh, limit the discharge time and you have a direct connection to pin 2 where it looks until the capacitor discharges through a resistance to one-third of the power supply voltage but for the monostable mode you just want a 
instant discharge and the output goes low. So, thanks for watching. I will uh, post this diagram to my uh, Patreon page and the more Patreon support I get, the more diagrams I will make. This is actually an old diagram and that I will post to uh, Patreon. So, uh, Patreon support is uh, my way of kind of telling how much uh, people want diagrams. It takes time to make these and stuff. I would need a ton of views to spend uh, a lot of time making diagrams or Patreon support. And uh, only takes a one or two supporters uh, to make it a lot easier to make diagrams on Patreon. But in any case, hopefully you still enjoyed the video. Support me however you can. Doesn't matter if all you uh, want to do or can do is watch videos. That's uh, ultimately the best altogether. But uh, Patreon page and clicking product links if you live in the United States that I post, that uh, helps too. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.